Nancy Hendricks finally showed up. So it's either her or George. You don't know which one. Which one you're going to get? <laughs> Amen. Welcome back to Black Oak Baptist Church on Sunday night. Stand up, Father. Sing this one to blow in. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see. Miss Anna's going to play. You step out and shake someone's hand and not make them feel welcome. Would you do that? Well, good to see everybody tonight. Glad you're here. And praise the Lord for the beautiful sunshine outside. A little windy, but beautiful sunshine outside. Not you, Roger. <clears throat> In the ministry, you hear people say <clears throat> a little bit of everything and uh, had a a visiting lady come up to me this morning after church was over, and uh, I'd never seen her before, as far as I know, never seen her before, 
And a uh, little, little, little short lady, and she said, boy, preacher. She said, I never heard anybody preach on bitterness that made me want to shout. <laughs> and, and, and I said, well, praise the Lord. I said, well, if I preach on it again, would, will you shout? And she said, if you preach on it like you did this morning. And I said, all right then. So th th those kind of comments just encourage a preacher. And, and uh, I, I appreciate her saying that. That was a great encouragement to me. Good to see our associate pastor back tonight. I don't like it when he's gone, and uh, it's good to have him back. I, I told you Wednesday night he had that appointment this morning scheduled prior to coming, and, and I thought he ought to keep those appointments. He has a few more, and, and uh, I think he needs to keep those. So, uh, But he's preaching tonight. I tell you, God's timing's just right. Uh, I've not felt too good this week in body, and, uh, and uh, he's preaching tonight, and I'm thankful for it. And uh, so you pray for him this evening, uh, that God would give him the word that we need to hear, that I need to hear, that you need to hear, uh, as we meet in this place tonight. I met with our finance team this afternoon after church was over, and we were just looking over the budget, looking over our, our giving reports, and, and, and I left that meeting so encouraged about what God's doing in our church uh, your faithfulness in giving and, and just how, how God just continues to move. And uh, I just want to say thank you for supporting kingdom work. And it makes it awful easy. Uh, it takes a whole lot of burden off uh, when you don't have to worry about finances and you can just serve Jesus and preach the word and get kingdom work done. So thank you very much uh, for supporting kingdom work. Before we take up the offering this evening, I wonder if anybody has a prayer request on your heart tonight. Anyone at all? Raise your hand very quickly so I don't miss you. Anybody? If not, I'm going to ask our ushers to come this evening as we take up our offering. Uh, don't forget this Wednesday night, we're not going to be having any service Wednesday night because we'll have our uh, Good Friday night service at 6 o'clock on Friday evening. So... Uh, no service Wednesday night, so you come Friday night, and let's worship the Lord uh, Friday night at 6 o'clock. Won't be a very long service. We'll maybe open up in a song. I'll share a devotion, and we'll take communion that night. So um, we'll see you Friday night. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you so very much for allowing us the opportunity to be here tonight. I pray this evening as we meet here in this place that your sweet Holy Spirit just meet here with us. God, thank you, Lord, for what you did this morning. Our, our, our children and youth just blessed our soul. Lord, they uh, encouraged us about what you're doing in their life. And, and they encouraged us about what you're doing uh, now in our church and where the future is heading for our church. The spirit that they carry, uh, Lord, just thrilled my soul. Father, I pray tonight, God, as we gather here in this place, Lord, that your spirit will gather with us. Lord, bless this offering now. Bless us as we continue to worship you. Lord, as Brother Matthew comes in a little while to preach to us, God, hiding behind the cross. Lord, let his words be your words. God, let him be as bold as a lion and gentle as a lamb. And God, I pray tonight that as he speaks, Lord, speak into my life, speak into all of our lives and draw us closer to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
name that song is there is Peace in Christ. Man, the choir is going to be working on that here for too long. Now Santa's been working on the music, trying to get that ready for us. And that is one more beautiful song right there. That is a beautiful, beautiful song. Stand with me before Matthew comes and preaches to us tonight. Sing the battle hymn of Republic of the Baptist United. Father, we just come to you tonight. We thank you for the victory that we have in Jesus tonight, Lord. Thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. Thank you for the love that's ever enduring and mercy that's grace and gracious upon us today, Lord. Thank you for our church and all of our church family, Lord. As tonight you would bless Brother Matthew as he comes to preach the word tonight, Lord. Give him the freedom to speak. Open our hearts so we'd be receptive to the word tonight, Lord. Forgive us for we felt you and come short. All of God's people said, Amen. You can be seated. Good evening. Well, it's certainly good to be back. I tell you, I think Sister Judy jinxed me. I had a sermon that I wanted to preach you tonight, but I'm just going to let the Lord have his way. We were over there in the office. I got my mic. She says, the Lord changed your sermon yet? And I said, no. Well, and I come in here, and sure enough, he did. That's okay with me because that gives him full control. I believe tonight that we're going to have struggles in this life, but I want to encourage you just for a second of who's going to walk through those struggles with you. But I need your prayers tonight because none of this has been thought up of what I'm going to say, so I need the Holy Spirit to do it. So before we do anything, let's go to him in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for just another time to... Uh, to be in your house, Lord, and we just thank you for the great grace that you've had upon us, Lord, that, 
Uh, while we were yet sinners, you died for us. And Lord, tonight as we come, uh, we help us to come with open hearts, Lord, and open hands. Just uh, wanting to receive, Lord, what you're willing to give us tonight. And uh, Lord, you never promised us that it, wouldn't, it would be easy. You never promised us that we wouldn't have struggles. But uh, tonight as we open your word, I just ask you, Lord, to remind us that you promised you would walk hand in hand with us. And you would take care of everything. Oh Lord, tonight I certainly can't do this without you, and I ask you just to get me completely out of the way and speak to whoever needs this tonight. Speak to my heart, Lord, and, and just speak to us all that we could leave this place encouraged and, not, uh, Lord, not wanting to give up, that we could leave encouraged uh, that you go before us and that nothing can stand against us. And, Lord, we just ask you to do something tonight that only you can do and lead us in the way we need to go. Lord, put the words in my mouth. In your name we pray. Amen. Uh, most of the time, you'll, uh, I'm sure Lee will attest to it, as you think, as a preacher, you'll think, do I have the right message? Do I have the right message? And, and most of the time, what the Holy Spirit's given you and you've studied out, He wants you to preach. But sometimes you're sitting in the church pew and your heart starts to beat and you feel like you're going to throw up where you're sitting. And He says, no, somebody needs to hear this. Uh, so I'm just going to trust Him tonight because He knows your heart and I don't. And praise God about that, because if I knew it, I probably still wouldn't get you what you needed. Uh, but Jesus said, I came not for those. He said, those are sick who are not sick need not a physician. He said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Uh, so tonight, I want to ask you to stand with me, and I want to read you something uh, here out of Mark chapter uh, number 5. Tonight, starting in verse number uh, 26. It says, or verse number 25 rather, it says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood of twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Uh, when she had heard of Jesus, uh, came in the press behind, and she touched the hem of his garment. Uh, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, uh, turned him about into the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, uh, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, uh, knowing what she had done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him the truth, and said unto her, Daughter, uh, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, uh, and be whole of thy plague. And I want to, you can be seated tonight, and I want to look at that verse where he said, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Uh, go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. I, I want to encourage you tonight. I want to try to encourage you with God being my helper tonight that this lady had this issue of blood that she had seen many doctors for. Uh, she had this issue of blood that in this day she would have went all around the world trying to get healed and no money she had uh, could get the doctor that she needed. And maybe she couldn't understand what she was going through. And maybe tonight you say, Preacher, I don't understand what I'm going through. Maybe tonight you say, I don't know why I can't feel the Lord Lord's Spirit. Or maybe you say tonight, I don't know why it feels like the Lord's forsaken me. Or maybe you say tonight, preacher, I don't know what's going on. But can I encourage you tonight that God's still on the throne? Can I encourage you tonight uh, what Jesus said when he got word that his best friend Lazarus was dead? Over there in John chapter number 11 and verse number 4, it says, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. Can I tell you tonight that your struggle is to bring God glory. Uh, can I tell you tonight that it doesn't matter what you face. We serve a God that there's no mountain too big for him to move. Uh, there's no waters too strong for him to part. Can I tell you tonight that I was going to preach about communion and about how all the people uh, walked away from Jesus and he asked the 12 disciples, he said, are you going to go away also? But can I tell you tonight that I don't know why or uh, what's on your heart, but can I tell you tonight that I'm sure of this? that God brought you here tonight and he brought me here tonight and he changed my heart so you would be encouraged. Uh, this lady, she had no hope. Uh, nobody could help her. 
a preacher. The doctors couldn't help her. The disciples couldn't help her. And she thought, maybe if I just touch the hem of his garment, she said, I shall be made whole. Uh, can I tell you tonight, that's all it takes. Uh, we gave the invitation this morning after preaching a hard message and uh, nobody moved. And then this little 10-year-old boy stepped out and he, he come to the altar and he said, preacher, I was saved three years ago, but I haven't told anyone. He said, and I said, I said, little man, I said, if you died today, where are you going? And he said, I'm going to heaven. And I said, why? And he said, because I've let Jesus into my heart. Can I tell you tonight, that's all it takes for you to be made whole is the faith of a child. I don't know what you're facing tonight, but praise the Lord, he does. And if you could just get the faith of this woman, you'd be made whole real quick. You see, she knew she wasn't aiming high. She knew she could do nothing within herself to be made whole. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Another gospel says, if I could just touch the border of his robe. You hear me tonight, I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know, you may say, preacher, I'm barely hanging on. But tonight, if you're barely hanging on, you better make sure it's by the hem of his garment. It's the only thing that's going to be sufficient to bring you through what you're facing. Lazarus was Jesus' best friend. The Bible says that Jesus wept when he got word of Lazarus. But he began to go and he said, This sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God. That the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Can I tell you, it, it may be painful what you're going through. It may not make sense to your mind. It may not, you say, preacher, it doesn't even feel like the Lord's standing with me anymore. But can I tell you, in Hebrews 13, 5, he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. He said in Romans chapter 8 that nothing will pluck you from his hand. He said, not death, not principle principalities, not the devil himself can take you away from the Lord's hand. I don't know what you're struggling with tonight, but I can tell you the only way a preacher that you're going to be made whole is if you come get a hold of the hem of his garment. Uh, so many times I, I go to different things in this world and I try to get made whole. I, I say, if I just do this, I'll get peace. If, if I just do this, I'll find peace. If, if I just do this many good works, I'll find peace. And Jesus says, son, if you just take my hand you'll be made whole can I tell you tonight I don't know if you're struggling financially I don't know if you're struggling with sickness in your body I don't know if you're struggling with your family uh, but this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God and he didn't say you had to go through it on your own uh, James said the trying of your faith worketh patience and I'll tell you tonight you would never be thankful for relief without the pain you'd never be thankful for the sunshine if you never saw the darkness uh, you'd never be thankful for his peace if you never had to suffer affliction but praise God he said he would never leave your side but what are you going to do about it where are you going to go now, that sermon that I had this, uh, this morning was uh, the disciples walking away and Jesus said are you going to go away also and Peter looked at him and he said Lord he said, where else am I going to go? He said, you have the words to eternal life. He said, you're the only way. You see, that lady that had that blood issue, she did it backward. She took it to all these different doctors first when she should have took it to the great physician. But can I tell you tonight, many people don't believe anymore, but I believe the Lord can touch you and heal you tonight or whatever it is. But it takes faith. You say, preacher, how do I have the faith that uh, this lady had when uh, she, she, this crowd uh, was around Jesus and she said, if I just touch that string hanging from his wore down robe where his feet's been walking on it, she said, I shall be made whole. You said, preacher, you say, how do I get that kind of faith tonight? How do I meet, be made whole tonight? Uh, preacher, how do I get rid of what I'm struggling like this right here? Uh, I tell you, I used to think, what are people going to think of me until one day I learned that uh, he is the great physician. That he will take away anything that you're struggling with. But can I tell you tonight, you say, preacher, you say, the Lord's forsaken me. You say, oh, the Lord's not around me. The Lord's not helping me. Can I tell you tonight, oh, you have not oh, because you ask not. Oh, that lady fell down and she crawled on her hands and her knees. If that's what it takes for you to get to Jesus tonight, I'm telling you, you better do it because he's the only way. You're going to be made whole tonight from that sickness, from that battle with the devil. He's the only one that's going to protect 
protect you. And that lady didn't care what a, a single person in that place thought. She fell down on her hands and her knees and she crawled to Jesus. And immediately Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? Peter said, Master. He said, Lord. He said, there's a crowd thronging you right now and you ask who touched me. Jesus said, I felt virtue go out of me. Can I tell you tonight? I'm about to pass out, but can I tell you tonight? I don't know what you're struggling with. I want to read you one more thing, then I'm going to be done tonight. You can at least say amen to that. There's another account in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 6. Go there. Verse number 45, Jesus had just fed 5,000 people, and then he sent them away. And then Jesus went into the Mount of Olives to pray, and he sent his disciples across the sea to go to Bethsaida. And it says there in verse 45, straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into the mountain to pray. And when he was even coming to the ship, uh, was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land, and he saw them toiling and rowing, uh, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them walking upon the sea, and he would have passed by them. Uh, but when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and they cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and he said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed in themselves uh, beyond measure, and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves. Uh, for their heart was hardened. Out on the water, uh, the storms were raging high. Uh, they didn't know what to do. Uh, the Bible says that they began to be in fear, and another gospel writer said that they cried out, saying, It's a ghost. Even the disciples that saw Jesus with their own eyes, they had a struggle. And if they did, you're going to have a struggle. Uh, but praise God, he does it send you into one storm by yourself he met them disciples and in the gospel of Matthew Peter got out of the boat and he stood on the water with Jesus and he took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to sink and he said Lord save me and the Bible says immediately that Jesus reached for his hand and saved him uh, can I tell you tonight the moment you reach out for the hem of his garment he'll immediately stick his hand out and save you uh, the minute you whether you need salvation whether you need rescued from a dark place he said I will go with you even unto death uh, tonight your sickness is not unto death but it's for the glory of God so it's time to rejoice those disciples just watched Jesus take nothing and make something out of it to feed all these people if your heavenly father feeds the fowls of the air why wouldn't he take care of you he tells, he tells the oceans where to begin and where to end he tells the mountains when they got to stop growing. A lady sung a song this morning that the same seed that he planted grew the tree that he died on. Think about that. It was a part of his plan from the beginning. Over there in the book of Jonah, when Jonah said, I'm the reason that this storm is coming because I've been disobedient, he said, throw me over and the storm will cease. And when they did, they said, who is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? The disciples said that out on the water. I'm going to tell you tonight, you may have thought this Christian life was going to be easy. Spoiler alert, it's not. But there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. Jesus said, in this world, you'll have trouble. I guarantee you tonight, you're going to have trouble. And sometimes I sit back and wonder what in the world is going on. But i got to remind myself that he's still on the throne. Lord, why is this happening? I'm in control. Just trust me. I'm going to tell you tonight, if you can trust for every piece of that puzzle to be in the box that you buy your child, you can trust that everything in your life is there for a reason. If I can get on an airplane and trust the pilot to get me there, I can trust Jesus whatever I face. I'm going to tell you tonight, if, if you get in the car with Haley and she's driving and you trust her to get you where you're going safely, you can trust the Lord with whatever you're going to face. I'm be in trouble for that later. You know what a pilot does when they're flying through a storm? When they're flying an airplane, I read this a while back and it stopped me in my tracks. When they're flying through a storm and they, they can't see out of the windshield anymore, they have to trust their instrument. When they can't see in front of them two feet, they've got to trust their training. They've got to trust their instrument. 
they got to fly off of not their feelings, but off of their faith of what they've learned. You say, preacher, tonight I can't see two feet in front of me. I'm going to tell you tonight, the Lord changed my heart to tell me to tell you to trust your instrument. And this instrument has been tried. It's been tested. You remember David said, Saul, this armor's not been proved in battle. He said, I can't wear it. This armor's been proved in battle. This armor has won the battle. But listen to me tonight. This is the key point. It's up to you to pick it up and put it on. The other day, I was fighting the devil real hard, and I thanked the Lord for Haley, and she looked me square in the face, and she said, when are you going to stop taking this and put your armor on and fight the devil? I said, I guess right now. So I'm going to say the same to you. I don't know what you're facing tonight, but I can say the Lord's been here. That lady with that blood issue, she realized that it's good to have doctors. God gives us doctors. God gives doctors knowledge to heal us, but he's the great physician. It's good, to, it's good to go to those people. But why do we make him our last resort? That lady with the blood issue made him her last resort, and she surely found what she needed. I believe that there's nothing in the Scripture by accident. I believe that's there to tell you and I that we should go to him first. When I turn to other people, when I'm going through something, I can find encouragement. Brother Lee can give me encouragement. Haley can give me encouragement. Brother Roger can give me encouragement unless it comes to sports. Uh, whatever it may be, I can receive the encouragement, whatever it is. But if I'll just turn to him, I'll find the peace that surpasses all understanding. Uh, Jesus said, in this world you'll have trouble. But he said, take heart, I've overcome the world. He said, in him you can have peace tonight. Can I tell you, John 10, 10 says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. You say, Preacher, why am I facing this right now? It's because the enemy wants to take you out. The Lord showed me something the other day. If you got joy, he wants to steal it. If you're struggling, if, 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 you, if your marriage is good, he wants to kill it. If your church attendance is good and your worship is good, he wants to destroy it. The Lord showed me something the other day. I was struggling and I felt like I was laying down and the devil was tramping all over me. And the Lord said, why are you not being sober and why are you not being vigilant? I'm not talking about drinking alcohol sober. You ain't got to worry about that. I don't do that. I'm talking about being alert, uh, watching for the enemy to come. Uh, the Bible says he seeks his prey as a roaring lion. Can I tell you what my instrument tells me tonight? He seeks as a roaring lion, but he's an imposter and he's wearing a costume because he's just a little kitten compared to the lion of Judah. He's just a little ant compared to my king. Uh, and I got to tell you tonight uh, that one of these days I, I watched a video from the Tennessee Baptist board they posted the other day and the, the preacher was preaching and he said God's still on the throne. He said his hand's still on the throttle and one of these sweet days he's going to come back and he's going to get us all and we'll hear it's been worth it after all. It'll be worth it after all. Not because the walls of Jasper, not because, uh, uh, not because the streets of gold, not because the crystal seas, but because I will see the face of my Savior that protected me. It says in 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, the Lord is faithful and he will protect you from the enemy. But what do you do when somebody breaks into your house? Uh, you call the police. Uh, what do you do when you see somebody suspicion walking, suspicious walking outside? You call the police and you say, can you stroll by here and maybe it'll scare them away. Tonight, can I tell you, if you're saved, Christian, there's a, a creeper that's strolling around your life and he's not just looking at it, he's seeking to take it. So why not call for help from the great physician. The Bible says at the name of Jesus the devil must tremble. Why not come and get help tonight? If you'll stand to your feet and brother, you come with a song. I ain't got nothing left. I'm about to pass out. I don't know what you need but I've said all the Lord's given me. You come grab the hem of his garment if you need it tonight. 